When should you put the insulation on the outside of your wall? A better question might be, when shouldn't you? Welcome to the Affordable High Performance Home Series. Howdy y'all, I'm Jordan Smith. I'm a design builder here in Austin, Texas, and we are trying to figure out whether we can build a high performance home for an affordable price. And in this episode, we are gonna be looking at the wall assembly. My favorite wall assembly is based off of Joe Stebrick's perfect wall. Basically what we're making sure the wall does is it doesn't let the roof fall down on you, so it's gotta be structurally sound. It's gotta keep all the water out, and this is liquid water, and this is water vapor, and all the water we wanna to try to keep on the outside. If water does get on the inside, it's nice to be able to let it dry out, because if it can't dry, it's gonna die. So we gotta manage that water in and out, and we also have to make sure that air doesn't come in, because if air comes in, it brings in water vapor, and water vapor, when it hits cold condensing surfaces, turns into liquid water, which is bad. So we don't want to have air coming in as well. And then we also want to make sure that we keep the whole wall assembly warm so we don't have those cold condensing surfaces. Let's get right into the actual model and I'll build this wall out so you can see it visually. Here we have the studs of our walls. We went with the two by four wall on this because it's cheaper than a two by six. It gives us all the structure we need. And because we're doing exterior insulation, which I'll get to in a second, we're not needing that big cavity to fill full of insulation. On top of this, we put the sheathing. For the sheathing, we went with an OSB product. OSB is oriented strand board, it's chips of wood. It's an engineered product and it's a very good product, but you can't let it get wet. It's not gonna do great if you build a shed out in the middle of a pasture and you let it get rained on, it's gonna turn into vertical mulch. And that's what people call it because they don't understand that it's a great product when used in an appropriate application. The thing you cannot beat about OSB is it's the most inexpensive, good sheathing product that you can use. You can go cheaper, but then you're building out a cardboard and there's gotta be a line, right? Maybe on the next version, we'll look and see if we can make cardboard work. But in this case, for an affordable high performance home, we decided to save the money on the sheathing instead of doing an integrated WRB to where our water resistant barrier and our sheathing is the same product. We've separated those. We've done OSB for our shear and for our structure. And then on top of that, we are going to be adding Tyvek. Now I love Tyvek as a material. It is a really good WRB product. The challenge with Tyvek is the assembly can get very, very tricky. If you could have a pretend building with no corners and no roof interfaces and no foundation interfaces and no window penetrations and no door penetrations, if it was just a flat wall that expanded to infinity and you wrapped it with Tyvek, it's fantastic. It breathes where it needs to breathe. It keeps liquid water out where it needs to keep liquid water out. It's a great product in and of itself. The challenge is how to do the details correctly. Now this video is not gonna get into all the weeds of all the details. There's great information over at DuPont Tyvek's website to where you see exactly how to detail all this. But if you choose to use this product, I highly recommend you do a lot of research on how to install it correctly. I think the install is the predominant reason while most of my colleagues have moved on to other products that have an integrated WRB with the sheathing product. So WRB, the Tyvek, keeps the weather out, weather resistant barrier, water resistant barrier. It's our primary water barrier to keep water that gets behind the cladding from getting into the house. You can have that all as one board, like Zip or like WeatherLogic or like several others. And that's great and it's easy to install. So it's sort of the easy button and you don't have all of the installation problems that you have with Tyvek. With Tyvek, we've separated it and we've got our WRB and our sheathing as two separate pieces and it works great as long as you get the detailing great. But Tyvek or the integrated WRB doesn't do anything for insulation. We still have the opportunity, if we only had insulation between our studs, we have the opportunity for that sheathing to get really cold, especially as we go up north, that sheathing can get really cold. And best case scenario, you're just letting a lot of heat escape 
your house. The heat hits the stud, goes through the stud, hits the sheathing, and goes outside. Worst case scenario, you have a bathroom that gets really humid as you're taking a shower, that water vapor is able to get behind the sheetrock, say an outlet or some way that it can leak back behind there, and then it hits a cold condensing surface, and that vapor water turns into liquid water, and liquid water is no good. It's gonna cause rot, it's gonna cause mold, all kinds of problems. So one, let's try to keep the water out, even as water vapor, but also let's not have a cold condensating surface so that if water vapor gets in there, it doesn't turn into liquid water. And we accomplish that with exterior insulation. In this case, we decided to go with PolyISO. This is an Atlas product, Energy Shield XR, that really works well for our climate and this wall assembly. What I like about PolyISO is I'm able to gain R value quickly per inch. It has the highest R value per inch of any insulation. So I'm able to have a thinner wall and still have a high R value. The other thing that I like about this is it's aluminum faced and we installed it incorrectly. We put it shiny side out. This is not recommended by Atlas, but I've read articles that are talking about how the insulative value of the whole wall is increased when you have a reflective surface in your air cavity. So we chose to do that. If you choose to do it, you're doing it on your own. Call your insulation manufacturer and ask them if you can. We did it this way because we wanted to. Beyond that shiny foil face, we have an air gap. And this air gap is crucial to this wall assembly. What the air gap does is it allows any water that gets through our masonry cladding, which water will get through there. If you don't believe me, go find a brick wall where you can see both sides of it and spray a water hose on it. You're gonna to see tons of water pouring through the mortar joints. Water will get through there and it needs to find a way out. Putting an air gap behind the cladding allows all of that water to find its way out through the weep holes below. We also give ventilation in that air cavity, letting everything dry out. So in a rain event, everything on the outside of our insulation can get wet and it can dry because if it can't dry, it's going to die. And this is the perfect wall assembly. Studs with insulation, sheathing, WRB, exterior insulation, air gap, and then cladding. It's a great way of building. It's very simple to build and it just looks great. It gives, with the stone especially, it gives just this historic Fredericksburg, Central Texas look that I really, really like. Next time, we're gonna get into how we did the same thing. If you take the perfect wall and you tilt it this way, it becomes a perfect roof. And there's some really cool details that we did to make the perfect roof tie in to that perfect wall. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the exciting content coming up. Comment below on your favorite WRB system. What do you love? What do you hate? What challenges have you seen? And join us next time as we endeavor to build better.